Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is specifically for wood carvers, chainsaw carvers to be exact. I made this video for a friend. I never thought I'd see the light of day, so if it sounds like I'm talking to a single person, well, today it's you. In this video, I go over how to maintain a bar and chain, brand new or used, it doesn't matter. You're gonna learn to maintain it and I'm gonna give you a few things to look out for. Okay, well maybe this video isn't gonna have the same sass and pageantry is save one of my others, but I'm sure you'll find it amusing. My name's Jeff Moore, I'm the Northwoods Carver, and thanks for seeing what I saw. All right, so this is a brand new uh, Samurai Legend. As you can see, the tip is very, very small. Smaller than my pinky. And, uh, this is what I use on my 120s and 140s. Nothing, nothing bigger. And uh, I'm this package. All right. So this one is straight from the factory, and everything from the factory that you get has got a cross, the, the grooves are cross grain here. So when I say dressing the bar, it means, well at first it means to get rid of this and get any micro grooves going in long, in elongated, or I should say along the, the trail to the tip. So you need to get yourself a Scotch-Brite wheel if you don't already have one. Mine's already worn worn out pretty bad. But. So what I do is I just get in there and I'll take off any can any any cannon bar you get. It's always painted. Any steel bar. What you want to do is get underneath that paint because all the you know they're all the same. They all have cross grain. And so what you want to do is get underneath there and get all those lines these are all cross. What you want is to have your micro lines going this way to help move that oil to the tip. Also, it reduces a lot of friction. And I'll do a, I'll do it one better. Usually, I'll what I'll do is I'll just take a sharpening stone, get a little wet there. So this is uh, just a stone, and it runs. The stone is runs on the groove, right between the two grooves, right? So I'll just put that right in there. And it knocks out all of the little... Um, takes out all the little dings and... You could also just use a regular regular stone and just run the corner in the edge there. What that's going to do is going to knock down all of the... So this one's brand new so we don't have any of that. But if I grab any other carving bar, there's always going to be little nicks and things and just run your finger down there. You don't want to have any nicks in there. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll just take... I'll also tat, uh, touch this edge off just a bit. Just on the edge. Alright, I'll do the other side. It's just knocking off the square edge just a little bit, and then you come back in with the stone, and then it'll knock off the inside edge. That leaves you less surface area for the chain to run. And get you some of these diamond files. Because once you get up, if you get any little nicks up here in the tip, you use these diamond files, you get right up in there and, and just knock out what you can. Because you're not going to be able to file this hardened steel, whatever they're using up there. But uh, yeah, so basically I do that and then I'll take a fine, a fine, uh, a fine, like for sharpening chisels, or you can use any fine one. And then what I'll do is I'll just 
get this thing honed down. I mean, normally I'll, I'll spend 10 minutes per side. Make sure, look, use the light, make sure you got all your scratches out. All right? Some people say it's excessive. But when you see it run on there, it feels just like glass, you know? And uh, so like I said, if up here if you have little dings or any nicks or anything, you get that, any one of these diamond tools and you just want to get in there. You don't have to remove it completely. It's nice too, but if you can get in there and just knock them down so they're not, because what that's going to do is just create cat havoc as it gets worse on the chain and the sprocket and the bar. Okay, so the thing I was talking about, uh, about the chain, what to watch out for. A lot of carvers, I don't care how long they've been carving, they just don't, <coughs> they didn't get, you know, schooled on this and uh, it's very common and it's nothing to be ashamed of or anything because I didn't learn about this until about, I don't know, almost 15 years into my career. <laughs> um, so basically when you have that bar, when I dressed yesterday. So when you have this bar, you get it all dressed nice. Um, this one I partially dressed for you yesterday. But what happens is, see, what makes these kinks isn't, is not, so you can see that right there. If I see that. So as that comes around, it's not, there you go. It's not, See how most of these are just not, some go like that right there, that'll go nice and easy. But then you've got these other ones that are just kinked and they just won't come, ar come around. So as you can, as you can probably gather, um, this isn't going to be good at high speed. Even, a, even at low speed with a little 120, it's, it's good enough to carve with speed, but it's still even at that speed, will destroy the front of your bar. And because of the nature of this chain, it's going to want to, let me get this board here. Let's see. All right, so this is, I kind of leave this up for when I do my classes. Anyways, so basically what's happening is instead of, yikes, instead of this, whoops, instead of having a square uh, uh, tip, so, like, so this would be you looking at the, the front of the bar like so, it makes like an H pattern. You can see inside there, right? You can see inside this, it's, it's an H pattern, just like right here, right? So what happens is, as those kinked chains, the kinked links go around, it starts knocking the out of this inner inside, right? And it starts to peel back the wall on the outside right here, right? And this will start to, to like flare out, and I'm sure you've seen it. And if you haven't, look for it. Um, and so what happens is it starts digging and digging and digging because it's not going around smoothly. Smoothly. So what you're going to end up with is something that looks. One marker. Oh, here we go. Something that looks more like this, right? And so what that does, if, if you ever see anybody complain about. Um, you see posts online or on Facebook on the carving things where shit on the carving things where uh, hopefully you saw that oh yeah you did see it okay so you'll see online where people show their tips all exploded out right well that's what that's from it's from chains that are kinked, that are going around at 
breakneck speed because a lot of guys just mash the gas and go. You know, they don't. There, there's no, there's no throttling. Um, uh, you know, they don't. They don't pull back. It's just all balls put to the floor. Whereas in when you're carving with, especially with these guys, you don't really need to to like really watch it too much because you're only dealing with a 120 or 140. They only go so fast. Um, but on a gas saw, I've seen people put those on gas saws. <laughs> I know people use them with some success, but um, as far as uh, those split apart, that's exactly what happens. They're not paying attention to their setup. Um, so what happens is this chain eventually will eat this bar up until the point where it just rams its way through because it's it's there's a lot of torque and the reason why this gets this way could be well could be a couple three couple three things one the chain is too loose if it's too loose then it slaps as it comes around as it comes around it's like a wave right and uh, it, it needs it's just uh, it's, I think in, no matter if you're perfect with it, I think it's still gonna kink at some point. I just, it's the nature of the beast. Hopefully, it, you know, you, you, you can keep an eye on your your expensive bar and baby it, uh, but the, always check your chain. So what I always tell people is to just take them like so and just do this. And if you, you can see it, right? You can see how they're just not, working so good um, they're not working at all just about every other link is kinked um, so what happens is leave it on you, you, you take a brand new chain put it on a brand new beautifully dressed bar put it on there a little too loose and over time uh, what happens is it you can't you know if, if it's not getting enough oil or whatever it's not a good thing because it's adding friction clearly uh, but you're not really dealing with too much chain speed in this case not so much for a gas saw but when it comes to um, damage uh, it happens it's a peening effect it's just like when you take um, you know it, it, these don't get misshapen because of heat it takes way too much heat to to uh, alter the shape of the steel so what happens is it comes around slaps into the hardened steel bar of course and eventually starts it just peens the uh, where the where the rivet is right up underneath there so that's what stops this thing from from completely relaxing over time it does that and so you got to keep an eye on that and if you do discover that it has something, just do a quick little touch up on your bar and get a different chain. Try not to make that mistake. Chain's cheap, bars are not. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the, the that process. So like if you cut, if you do, you're doing it to the point where it's really wearing away on your bar, you better check your sprocket. Because there was a time where I took my sprocket, I you know I, I kept trashing brand new cannon bars with brand new chains. I couldn't understand what the fuck I was doing, why it, it was like that. And uh, took it to the dealer and my saw guy, and he said that uh, he goes, "Well, did you check your sprocket?" And I said, "No." Oh, so he pulled that sprocket out and it was cheesed. I put a new sprocket on. <laughs> dress my bar put a new chain on good to go but I always keep an eye on it you know these bars are about $150 and I don't want to keep buying them so I just baby them anyways also don't put them on your jaw horse because inevitably you're gonna drop it or you're gonna knock the jaw horse and it goes face first down into the floor and cheeses your your tip okay the other thing is the raker. So what I do on all my little stuff, my carvings, my 12 inch bars, not so much on the bigger stuff, but on the 12 inch stuff, um, anything I'm gonna be having a carving tip with, uh, shorter bars, 
I will uh, I will make I don't know if you can see this I will I will make where is it there you can see my raker I file it up into a dolphin like a like a knife shape like a dolphin uh, dorsal so basically I'm taking it I'm taking whatever this profile is right it's got this weird uh, this kind of thing. and so basically what I'm doing is I'm just shaving off the edges it's still maintaining it's still maintaining I'm just shaving off the edge so basically I'm turning this shape into well more of a dorsal and what it allows it to do is it allows it to still bite and keep its depth but also it allows the side of the tooth the sharpness so you get a little uh, you're gonna get way faster cleaning clean cuts and you're gonna have uh, it's just gonna turn into a laser beam for you um, just don't go too crazy just you know just nip it so that and it's always it's like I'm, I do that on my I don't run 50 gauge ever in any of my small stuff it's all 43 comfort chain and comfort chain has those those weird double uh, you can see that that weird double uh, thing that matches the width of the cutter so all you're doing is you're just shaving a little bit off so you can get some a little bit more cut and becomes more aggressive and it becomes a lot more fun to carve with so anyway those are a few tips um, if you have any questions just give me a give me a, hoot, a holler give me a holler shoot me, call me whatever all right so luckily for you <laughs> I um, just bought a brand new saw put on a brand new chain and a brand new bar and I don't like the way it cuts it's just I feel there's a sense of resistance and so what I'm gonna do is do the raker thing that I told you about so basically we're just gonna file these upward into a dolphin or a knife well I'd be doing everybody a disservice if I didn't say right off the top that this is an abbreviated version of some of the things that we go over but in this case it's just basically a, a a rundown really it's it's there's just a I mean there's a lot of examples that I have laying around the shop of destroyed bars that I can say okay you see this this is what I was talking about and instead I was forced to use a marker I don't know why I did that I, I think I had some some stuff around that I could have used but just you know I have that drawing up there so I can blow it up you know to a larger size so that everyone can kind of see now this was for a friend out in I believe it's Maine well, well I don't want to give too much away I figured since I made it and I sent it to him I might as well just share it online or share it on YouTube and you know there's a lot of, like there's a lot that I left out um, there's there's a lot that um, I could go into you know troubleshooting and that's another thing we go through in the class what to listen for you know what a saw sounds like when it's about to the bed so to speak <laughs> so yeah I got a piece of paper. Oh, well. anyway uh, that should help you out on your next odd project well in case you haven't figured it out it's this guy thanks for watching everybody and remember, if you're gonna be a dink, be a good one. <laughs>